Hello there, welcome back to Simon Shed. It's time for a layout update on the Shed Valley Railway, which is uh, my version of part of the Seven Valley Railway in Engage. Uh, so ho hope you're all keeping well. I've uh, been doing a bit of uh, lockdown layout work and uh, yeah, so coming up, plasticky trees, bits and bobs, and station canopy so thanks very much for all the recent support uh, the channel's had a bit of a boost lately in subscribers and views uh, so i really appreciate that um, but for now let's uh, get on and see what i've been doing on the layout turn that off so you can hear me uh, <laughs> yeah it's getting a bit uh, toasty outside and uh, in the shed uh, so I've got the old air conditioning unit out but what I want to talk about is trees so I mentioned last uh, last layout update uh, I'd run out of uh, sea foam and I need to do a lot more trees uh, I've still not managed to source any uh, kind of understandable that uh, a lot of model shops are shut down at the moment and um, so I said I'd ordered some ones that look good off uh, Amazon and they arrived and they look terrible <laughs> they're really plasticky uh, you can't can't really see from that you can kind of see but basically if any light hits the this one it sort of sparkles and it just looks really plasticky they're all sort of banana shaped this one's slightly better bit of colour but uh, still very plasticky it's not quite coming across how bad they are on the camera I don't think but uh, uh, let me show you one next to a tree on my layout even from there it's pretty obvious and when you get closer it really does look terrible so yeah what can we do about that yeah rather than uh just bin them uh, or stick them back on ebay or something i've uh got some uh ground cover uh woodland scenics uh, i think it's just grass uh just foam stuff stuck a load of pva on the trees just basically dip them in pva and uh yeah Certainly looks a lot better than it did. I uh, got a bit more to disguise there at the bottom, but they have kind of stuck to the box. But yeah, that's much more like it, and will blend in a lot better with the uh, the rest of the trees. So a uh, bit of work to do, but uh, I think I can end up with some usable trees. And speaking of the heat again, uh, I've just swapped out, uh, I had uh, these 50 watt halogen bulbs in the uh, lights. So I've got 12 sockets, um, 12 bulbs, and they were all 50 watt halogen and they did get red hot. The idea was just to get as much light as possible onto the layout. Um, looking at it through the viewfinder now, uh, with the, I think it's seven LEDs swapped in. Um, it doesn't really look any different to me. It'd be interesting to see if uh, you can tell any difference. But I've also uh, pointed them more uh, at the wall rather than directly down onto the layout because now if I wave my hand here, you, c you used to be able to see a massive shadow. You see there's the shadow. So when I was trying to film uh, running videos, you'd quite often see an out <laughs> silhouette of the camera following the train round. But now if I just hold the camera here, you can't see the shadow unless you're looking right at the edge of the layout. So that should be a lot better for filming in terms of cutting down the shadows. Uh, it still seems nice and bright. And 
yeah it's not going to uh, be uncomfortably hot in here I think I'll just get uh, I've just run out of LED bulbs so uh, I'll just get another uh, five of those and swap the rest out I think keep it nice and cool and it's always been a bit of a dodgy <laughs> situation with really hot bulbs next to these sheets I have kept a very close eye on it uh, so it'd be nice not to have to worry about that but also I've now and actually it wasn't all me uh, I'm not sure why but Oliver suddenly uh, was really keen to help me so uh, he's been uh, helping me just dunking the trees in PVA and rolling them around in the uh, scatter, this little fine turf scatter. I've used various different colours and you can probably see the different shades just to give a bit of variation. Uh, most of the existing stuff is all the green grass uh, shade. Uh, so I've started planting those. Uh, that one's leaned over a little bit, but never mind. I'll sort that out. So I've started planting those there. Um, and hopefully you agree compared to the last time that those uh, look a lot better than the sort of neon glowing uh, noddy goes to toy town kind of <laughs> plastic trees that uh, arrived in the post uh, so you yeah, needed a bit of work but uh, actually quite happy with those now I've cut the tops off some of them to make them a bit shorter so there's some variation in height because they're all very uniform so I'm gonna have to sort of dot them around I think uh, because it is pretty obvious they're all identical otherwise uh, that's why I've done some different shades as well so that's where we are at the moment I think it's time to uh, plant some trees a few days have passed and uh, some more LEDs have arrived uh, so I've changed all the bulbs over now and uh, as far as I can see the lighting looks fine but more importantly I've planted most of those trees uh, I'm going to leave it there for a bit and uh, sort of let it uh, let it settle down and see if I need any more if not then obviously I can use them the remaining trees to carry on down this way but uh, most of these are dry uh, fortunately this wonky one is not so we can fix that easily enough I usually just prop them up with a wagon until they're dry but it is annoying uh, if they're not straight because it just breaks the illusion immediately doesn't it so yeah we got a lot of trees down here uh, because the sort of entrance and exit to this bridge is actually hidden by trees and bushes uh, and it also helps to disguise that the footbridge actually just goes nowhere <laughs> so uh, when you're down here you can't really tell which is good and we got some more trees there uh, one or two dotted along here and then I uh, stuck one over by the safari park but most of them are over here so now where we've got the scenic break where the track just disappears it's not quite so obvious what's happening so that should make the running video shots a bit better when the trains disappear through there and uh, yeah I think they look okay I've, uh, managed to rescue them I think certainly a lot better than the uh, neon plastic things that turned up so let's figure out what's next and I think the next thing to look at is uh, to carry on with the 
uh, Metcalf platform canopy from last time. We were working on this uh, Kidderminster Seven Valley Station uh, canopy there. Uh, I said I was going to keep the kit completely standard. I changed my mind. <laughs> I decided to paint the uh, sort of framework uh, the same colour as the uh, one at Kidderminster using Hombrol Matte 100 uh, which gives a good representation of the colour that's there and uh, so I sort of carefully dismantled the bit I'd done and because I bought a couple of extra kits I uh, ended up with three of those uh, which does that, that and that so we've got quite a potentially quite an impressive structure there so I need to now uh, I've still got some bits left over that were extra as well so I think now I'm not going to mess with it any further I'm going to figure out how to join these bits together uh, put these roof bits on with the glazing and three of these at the front and three at the back uh, and not mess with it anymore because uh, I'm quite happy with that how it is now so uh, let's see if we can get a bit further with that and as if by magic there we go, it's quite a impressive structure I think. Uh, I'll get some close up shots but yeah it didn't take much to uh, stick the ends on on the roof. I'll uh, pick the best end for the front. Got a bit of an alignment issue there but it does seem to press down so that it lines up. Uh, this side is not quite as good so that'll be the back. <laughs> And be a little bit hidden but yeah I think I was right to stop messing about with it um, I did think about painting all these grey bits red but it it wouldn't look right um, so yeah I'm glad I stopped there and uh, yeah it was a really fun Metcalf kit to build and I think that'll look great on the, on the station platform at Kidderminster and ironically at the end of the video I'm now turning the heater off because uh, it's gone freezing cold again so goes the British weather but anyway I've uh, brought that down to the uh, shed so that will actually sit uh, somewhere around here uh, once that ground <laughs> surface is in place and the good news is the uh, kiosk does fit underneath the little Metcalf uh, magazine stand so that will go under there and I think that's going to look great just briefly um, does anybody know anywhere to get N-gauge buffers because uh, I seem to be very good at losing them and um, so I lost one on the class 68 Dapol and uh, I managed to find on DCC supplies page um, spare parts for that and they had them and sent them so I've got one of those I then came back in the shed and of course immediately found the missing buffer uh, just next to the platform at the Kidderminster end uh, so that was a waste of time, but uh, at least I've got some spares for that one now. Uh, the other one was the, uh, well, two actually, the Deltic prototype from Farish uh, is missing one on that end. And the Class 08 shunter, I think. Yeah, so that's sort of missing the whole piece, but I just couldn't find anywhere to get them, so I've tried... 
these, which are P and D Marsh, uh, sort of white metal buffers. So I'll see if any of those match up, but that's really all I could find. Uh, so much so, in fact, they ended up uh, for the 08, I found this very cheap uh, eBay auction for a body shell. So I can't currently see any way to easily remove those buffers off that body shell. Um, but yeah, it was just a, a body shell that was uh, somebody's had a go at painting up and uh, decided to sell on. Uh, I think it's actually for the older model, but uh, the buffers look very similar. They just need a touch of red paint on. Uh, but yeah, if you know how to get predominantly Graham Farish engaged buffers, do let me know. <laughs> so I think we'll leave it there. Uh, I'm just going to do some static grassing on that bit. I've just painted the background green for now, uh, but I'm afraid the urge to actually run some trains is getting the better of me and uh, so I've hoovered off the uh, bits of tree from there and uh, my excuse is I need to see how good the effect is uh, when the trains disappear and appear from that part of the scenery. I like it, I think that works well. Uh, so yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.